Hey everybody, Isaac Noble here. I figure I'd finally step in front of the camera and chat a little bit about arm mechanics. One of the first things that we're gonna chat about is internal and external rotation at the shoulder joint. When the forearm is down, this is called internal rotation. When the forearm heads backwards and is parallel to the ceiling, that's called external rotation. So during the swing, our arm goes from internal to external and back to internal rotation in a blink of an eye. This is one of the most important movements in the spike and the overhead throwing motion. Now when we're going through internal and external rotation, the goal or objective is actually to stretch our muscles, more importantly, our internal rotators. The internal rotators of the shoulder are the pectoralis major, latissimus dorsi, and subscapularis. Now in order to stretch those internal rotators, we have to do what's called a counter motion. This just refers to two segments of the body going in opposite directions. So during the swing, our torso should be rotating forward while our shoulder is rotating in the opposite direction or into external rotation. What that does is it allows those internal rotators to stretch, which is called an eccentric muscle action. Basically, they work like rubber bands. As those rubber bands are stretched, they gain elastic energy, which will then impart velocity to the arm during internal rotation. And now we have to put it all together. So this is where it gets a little tricky. One of the things that you have to remember is that the forearm provides the weight to allow the shoulder joint to rotate. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna face one direction. Toes, hips, and chest facing a wall. We're gonna pick our arm up to shoulder level. Elbow should be at 90 degrees. What we're then gonna do is we're gonna open up our trunk and now we're gonna gently toss that forearm backwards or into external rotation. At the very same time, we need to rotate our torso very forcefully forward. And it looks something like this. Now from the back, it looks something like this. So if you notice, that forearm is actually being propelled backwards into external rotation even faster as a result of a very quick torso rotation. And remember, one of the most important parts of this exercise is keeping the shoulder joint loose and relaxed. The biggest mistakes hitters make is thinking that they need to actually consciously contract or push the hitting arm forward. If you feel any sort of jarring motion or pushing motion at the shoulder joint, most likely you're doing it wrong. It is very counterintuitive. So when you're going through the exercises, the shoulder joint should be very, very loose. Arms should be relaxed, bodies relaxed. When you allow the shoulder joint to go through natural internal and external rotation, that's where you get a nice stretch and eccentric loading of those internal rotators. Remember, we're trying to increase range of motion for speed, not decrease it. So hopefully you have a little bit better understanding of how the shoulder joint works, how muscles are supposed to produce force properly, and how our body and shoulder are directly connected with each other. The faster the torso moves, the faster the shoulder will rotate, and the faster our arm will move. My name is Isaac Newbel. Thank you for your time and all the messages. There's more videos on the way.